Hello everyone and welcome back to Raise Aerospace and Kerbal Space Program 2 where I continue my construction of a base on the moon. We will get back to the rover that we delivered in the previous video in a little bit and try to implement some of the suggestions people made. But first I want to try something ridiculous. We've mostly been landing fairly simple base modules on the moon. Things have nevertheless gone wrong but you know they're one of the cockpit pieces, uh, one of these things and they have fuel tanks underneath and an engine and landing legs. This time we're going to use these inline Mark II cabins, uh, sorry, Mark I cabins. Uh, they're called Mark I Stowaway. Uh, there they are, there's a whole lot of them. And we have four rows of them. And we have baguettes for fuel. And we have spark engines on them. And I've tried to make sure they're balanced and symmetrical and we even have a docking port on top to control from. We have a reaction wheel, batteries, and a controller there. And we have solar panels on top. And my idea is that, well, these will be longish things to sort of help connect our base a little bit more. Obviously, the rover didn't work very well, well, so far. Uh, but uh, these will give our base more connectivity on a single launch. But there are obvious drawbacks to this arrangement. First of all, uh, if I try to put a nose cone on top, the entrance and exit on the end will be blocked. Now, we could put a decoupler there and put a nose cone, but I'm sort of worried about the whole decoupler and nose cone thing. I'm actually more willing to take the drag right now. We'll see whether that works out or not. Uh, more willing to take the drag than to actually put something that decouples, right? <laughs> I'm worried about things that decouple. Um, we have side decouplers here. I don't know if that's going to work out for us or not. It could, uh, and probably it'll stay attached to this piece, so that's not great, but we'll see how it works out. There's a lot of variables here. I put light strips on top, too. This is a lot of parts, actually. This is 150 parts all together, so we'll see about performance. We strutted them uh, bad. Oh, I shifted it after I strutted them, so I should probably restrut. So yeah, we've started them, and uh, we've got a skipper engine on the upper stage to bring them over to the moon. And then we have a main, not mainsail. I was going to use a mainsail, but I decided to skip the mainsail. We have one of the rhinos on the core, and then the Clyde sails. So we should have enough power and delta V. And we've started the Clyde sails. I don't have separatrons in the Clyde sails. I'll put those. Okay, so this is Moon Base 5, though really it's 5 through 8 if you want to go like that. Oh, did the struts on the boosters decouple? I mean, not decouple, detach. I think they did. There, there's a strut there, but yeah, the struts detached on the boosters. Let me bring it back in. Just can't get good struts these days. It's always the orbital camera at the start. Okay, will the drag kill us? Will something else kill us? I don't know. We're wiggling a bit, but we don't have to wait for anything. Let's go. And launch. Up it goes. Four base modules. A massive expansion to our moon base. Potentially. I once again tried mapping my joystick. It still doesn't work. So, I'm still using keyboard. I guess it's relatively amazing that Kerbal Space Program 1 had joystick support so well and consistently. Keeping it very close to prograde. Fairly manageable so far. I think the drag helps. <laughs> I don't know. It's wobbling on the top though. Our controller is all the way up here this time. I should have had another controller here. That might have made it better. If you want to know how to make a rocket more stable, have a lower controller that you're controlling from. Okay. Okay, radial decoupling happened, though with a pause. It always pauses there. We got a little bit of loss of speed, but it's, again, probably okay. Decoupling each of these is going to be a whole business, though. Well, this has gone better than expected. Okay, 
a little bit left over, but not too much. Right, separation. And ignition of the skipper. Okay, we'll coast a little bit to Apoapsis. Alright, well, the drag didn't get us much. And really, decoupling four nose cones, probably... I don't want to do that. So, I'll take the drag. It, it wasn't too bad. It looks like it took us about 3,600 meters per second to get to orbit. Because we had 400 left and it was indicating about 4,000 initially. So, yeah, not too bad. Not the way I'd like to do things, but we must make concessions here. Skipper has plenty of Delta V to get us to where we're going. Okay, we are in orbit, and let's plot for the moon. Okay, that's a fine transfer right there. It's looking very sci-fi-ish right now. Light strips! Well, it's the best I can do. One, go. So, it was a 150 part vessel on launch. And we didn't have too much lag, so there is that. And again, a clarification, lag, I mean the physics lag, I don't mean the frame rates. I'm not counting the frame rates. Um, I have more interest in the fact that physics is not delayed too much. Okay, one, zero. We probably still have most of our parts here. Okay, we've got a good periapsis. I don't think we should be drawing any power, so we'll just head on over there without extending the solar panels for now. Oh, it is drawing power though. Let's see. A little bit. Not enough for me to extend the solar panels, but it's definitely drawing some power. I haven't seen a lot of that from the game so far. Uh, we're mostly in line with the base, actually. We'll need to correct that. Yeah, this stage is OP for this. I mainly made it like this because we needed the length. <laughs> and I didn't want to put the modules on top, obviously. Strapping them to the side was much better. We'll get into a nice low orbit. Uh, possibly tilt a little bit. Okay, that's a good approach right there for our first payload. Um... Yeah, maybe it'd be safer to do it all symmetrically. There is a reaction wheel on here, and the inner payloads do have reaction wheels. Let me see. Let me save first. Maybe I'll just do one and see what happens. I've saved now. Oh, that was pretty safe, actually. Okay. I mean, apparently safe. Now, we probably ought not to time warp close to it. And we do have the little leftovers there. I don't know how that's going to affect landing at all. Control from here. Alright, let's go for it. Okay, we are leaving the mothership behind. Landing on our baguettes. My preferred way to land, really. Oh, I'm time warping now. This may cause a glitch for the mothership, I don't know. And it looks like we need to tilt a little bit north. Well, we'll target anything down there. Not sea level, definitely ground level. And we are coming down, there they are, 50 kilometers away. Will the baguettes manage to bear the strain? Delta V wise, I think each of these had 1,200. I initially put a dozen baguettes but decided that we could do with just eight. Well, we're at full thrust now. We don't have that much deceleration capability. Unfortunately, it's not keeping any track of my Delta V, but at least I can see the fuel. No, things are crashing, crashing trajectory as we get closer. 800 meters or so, it looks like. Gives extra messages about such things. I don't want to land too close to that thing. <laughs> uh, something just sounded like it exploded.
a little bit further away than I wanted. Uh, that one's spinning all over the place right there. Okay. Um, the baguettes worked. We can land on the baguettes. Now that spinning guy, we're gonna have to turn to that one. And we'll do it via regular change of vehicles in flight scene, which means the square brackets. As crazy as that's gonna be. Yeah, I, I, want, I wanted it more right there than here, but this is okay, I guess. This one hops. Okay, this is the guy. Um, SAS is off. Gotta retract landing gear. Oh, the soul panels did not survive this time. Well, it's not the landing gear. Well, let's try SAS. Oh, I think we lost one of the landing gear too, not just the solar panel. It's Bob. It would be Bob. Well, I don't know. You say three legs are balanced, but it probably should flop like this if it didn't have SAS on. I guess we'll let it flop like that. I don't know. I don't think there's any point in keeping it upright, is there? I don't like having modules with SAS on on the surface, right? That could be dangerous. I think the legs will prevent it from rolling around at least, maybe? Well, anyway, it was doing some weird stuff already, so we'll just uh, leave it be like that. Amazingly, the light tower is still stable. Maybe it's just that pod. Oh! Uh, this is upside down now. Well, we know it has no problem with that. <laughs> um, it does have a torque mode SAS only. But uh, I we disabled the torque on here. Let's just keep it that way and we'll turn SAS off. And now we have to see whether the wheels are going to do anything. Now it's floating above the surface. Okay. Okay. So, right now, let me turn SAS off. Right now, the rover is moving. So, what we've got is maximum friction level. Let me, let me, so, I tried various things. And let me just undo them and see, verify that friction level is the thing. So... Originally, friction level was one. Okay, but we also dumped uh, spring strength. Let's let's see. Uh, we've got no spring strength or damper strength, and now I've set the friction level to one. Okay, release brakes. There, it's moving, but they're spinning a lot, so they're having trouble gaining traction. Let's increase the spring strength, and it seems like the strong. St Okay, let's stop it first. Let's see if we can come to a start. Now, with the max spring strength... It doesn't look like the spring strength or damper strength do anything in particular. I can't really turn much right now. If we have... Well, this one was already on minimum. So maybe... Hold on, let's do maximum on all of them. Alright, so situation now. Friction level 1. Uh, drive limiter 100%, braking power max, spring strength, and damper strength max. We can still move. I don't know, maybe it was just having trouble last time, but I can't turn. My A and D aren't doing very well. Now we have SAS off, and I've turned off the reaction wheel, of course. I mean, we know what happens with the reaction wheel, but I tried turning off the reaction wheel last time too. We can turn a little bit, but not very quickly. Okay, now let me try increasing the friction level. Two, 
to max. Now we can turn better. Uh, though we might want that SAS and reaction wheel again. <laughs> uh, no, actually we don't, maybe don't need it. Oh, uh, okay, we, we sort of do. Maybe, okay, maybe I need it on all for writing ourselves though. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. Uh oh, okay, okay, it's gone, fair shape. Let's turn it off, turn it off! Okay, just slow down. Impact tolerance, 40 meters per second. We're getting quite a ways away from the base, though. Uh... Alright, alright, let's, let's not do that again. Maybe friction level doesn't need to be 10. But we definitely need more friction level to steer. Let's just have spring strength down to one. And damper strength to one. Okay, if we still whiff around a whole lot, I'll reduce the drive limiter. But right now, that doesn't seem to be the problem. Sometimes when I press A, it doesn't want to turn the wheels, though. And then... Hmm... Sometimes when I turn, it wants to flip around. Maybe just having a low friction level is good. I don't know, but then it doesn't want to turn much. But when it turns, it tends to flip around. Tell me whether... Let me, let me just dump all the spring strength and damper strength to see if that helps when it comes to not flipping around when we try and turn. I'll put the friction level back up again. Maybe it's the springs popping us around. Oh no, it's it's rolling, it's rolling. Shh. Okay, so we can get it moving. Uh, which combination of things will prevent it from rolling over? Uh, I, I'll limit the drive. It didn't seem like the spring strength or damper strength would help, but changing that was going to help. Um, we'll set that back to one. But we noticed that this time... It's not sunk into the ground. When we first landed, it was sunk into the ground. This time, it's on the ground. And it wasn't really the spring strength, but when I turned to it, it was already not sunk into the ground. Even though the spring strength and damper strength were high, and regardless of whether I turn it high or low, it's still not sunk into the ground right now. So it's something on landing. That may have messed up the suspension, I guess? Something like that? Who knows. We definitely need to take it slow with this one right now. I am going to institute a 6 meter per second minimum, not maximum. I think we'll take the numbers that we have right now. And just go with 6 meters per second. Maybe I should have different drive levels on the front wheels and back wheels though that pod. Uh, okay, well, we can drive it, folks. Uh, some combination of things, but I really think it was just the landing that messed it up. Maybe it seem, seems like regardless of what numbers I put it in now, now it's all right. So this space module is like that. Seems stable. This one is not stable. This one is moving on its own. I don't have SAS on and it's moving. Oh, that one's popping now. No! No, stop! They're moving on their own. No! This is... I wasn't looking for a mobile base. Okay, let me go to the tracking station and come back. Observer can't leave active vessel. What? Observer can't leave active vessel. I went to the tracking station. What's the active vessel then? Which one can't I leave? Okay, well, this is the active vessel, I guess. Um, that one's gotten all of... Oh, oh, oh. Okay, let's turn SAS on. It's lost all of its landing legs now. I don't know if I want it near the base. Oh, 
Uh, I think uh, Kerbal died. This doesn't have SAS anymore. It's just the roving tank. Do we have to wait until this slows down? I think we have to wait until this slows down. That one's just going back to orbit now. It might be for the best. Oh, there's been an explosion over there. Oh no. Well, you know what our moon base needs? More base modules. Because we've lost a few. I don't know where the other one went. I saw an explosion. We now have a forlorn tank with an engine, but at least it stopped moving. Yeah, but so why does it say SAS when there's no SAS? Hmm. <laughs> uh, K. Right. Yeah, I think the other one's completely wrecked. Well, like I said, we've got three other modules to land. Let's do it. <laughs> See, I mean, uh, we need more of them, clearly. It seems to be intact, too. Let's... Is it going out of control or something now? Uh, let me time warp and see. Let's get into daylight. Yeah, it's randomly turning. I'm just gotta get everything else off of it. I'm sure that'll cause no problems at all. Okay, you, can you stop turning? No. Okay, I'm gonna quit the game, come back, and see if they're alright. Start going to prograde. When I opened the menu, when I opened the menu, it stopped. Hold on. Okay, if I press SAS. No. No, uh, I don't know. This one stopped anyway, we'll go with it. The others may or may not be doomed, I'm not sure. Everything's spinning. I like modules that don't spin. Maybe we can try and stabilize, stabilize the others though. Oh, this one stopped. This one needs SAS. Okay, that leaves the mothership. Mothership seems to be in better control now. But things in the game just like to spin. They're just gonna retro burn it into the ground. Alright, that's good enough. It's going down. We'll follow this one. So, first of all, let's try and get a path that will hit the target. Uh, it's gone. It's going all over the place now. Uh, why did you suddenly do that? You were all nice and stable. Map. It didn't like map view, I guess. I don't know. Oh, uh, SAS. Come on. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna restart the game. Let me save it and restart. Okay. Okay, maybe it's stabilizing. All right, well, let's try. Okay, well, our mothership was disposed of. I saw its icon smack into the surface. Okay. We're on a shallower trajectory than last time. Okay, under 50 kilometers now. Having Kerbals in spacecraft Always invites the Kraken, let's face it. These these will probably survive much better because they don't have a Kerbal inside. Now last time those modules started spinning out before I like turned to them. It was when I was on landing that we had some spinning going on already. So it's just as soon as we enter the render range, the physics range of the vessels that they start acting up. 
Okay, slowing down. Well, we've got some crashing trajectories again. You know, we've got to take that seriously these days. I should have put wheels on them. Well, of course, I didn't know how well the wheels would work, but I should have put wheels on them just so that we could move them around a bit. But this is okay for now. We don't... We don't know if they're going to survive long enough to justify being fancy with them. Okay, we have sit down. Actually perpendicular to the other one. <laughs> not exactly what I want, but it's not bad or anything. It's just sort of random. Good news, uh, nothing appears to be flipping out. Uh, default name 40. What? That's the tank, right? We don't have many modules with Kerbals in right now. Well, the rover has a Kerbal in. That one there has a Kerbal in, and we got the lamppost. So right now, uh, for the episode, we're net zero on modules at the base. <laughs> and we're minus two on Kerbals. Sorry about that. Uh, tough to keep Kerbals alive here. But alright, we've got two more modules to land. Alright, it looks like it's under control. I don't know, I'm trying to go north, but... Oh! I don't know, are we controlling from the wrong thing? We were controlling from the wrong thing, that's why. Gosh, we wasted a lot of fuel. Okay, well we've wasted a lot of fuel because I was on the wrong controller and we've got a sort of bad uh, orbit all over. So, that's not good. We're perilously close to the surface. I'm not 100% sure we can do this safely right now. We don't have a whole lot of fuel left. Okay, will we survive this especially daunting approach? It's just a matter of whether we have enough fuel. It would be nice if I knew how much Delta V I had. This might be a little bit far away from the base. But I don't think we have enough fuel to do anything but land it right here, where it's ending up. It'll still be within two kilometers, and we do have a rover. But yeah, mistake on my part caused this to not have enough fuel. Well, that's it. Oh no! Ah, oh, wrecked. Yeah. Okay. We've got another one, though. <laughs> I guess they could still inhabit this. Sort of. Okay, last one. Where is it? Okay, it's past it. It will come around. And this time, let me just control from the right place this time. I put the docking port for a reason. It's depressing how long it took me to figure out that I was controlling from the wrong location, really. Okay, that is our approach. Take it from out here now. But you know, I think these more ambitious sort of base modules, instead of simple landers, might actually be safer in the long run. So we'll have to give that some thought. So that was the previous module that got wrecked, though I guess one part is still a vessel. Let me... can I set something else as a target? The problem is you can't set targets here. You can only do it on the map view, unlike the previous version. Um, I can't double click on them. Otherwise I'd set something else as a target instead of that one so we would land closer to the center. Look at that shadow. Alright, engine off. SAS off. I don't know, maybe we should keep SAS on, I don't know. But, well, nothing else hopping around or anything, at least. Those little bits from the previous one there. And let's get some solar panels out here. These little guys are pretty good. Only one that had demise was the one that I messed up on. 
Let's see as far as switching vessels right here is concerned. A little bit of a wobble there. This one's the most at risk with Valentina on it because we know what happened to the previous ones that had a cabin. Uh, the rover always wants to be on its back. I guess that's fine. <laughs> uh, we left it on its wheels, but then whenever you turn to it, it's on its back. But it looks like it's going to flip to upright here. Right now, uh, the wheel is clipping into the ground, though. Mind you, SAS is not on. But now it's okay. Next. This base module is fine. This one I needed to extend the soul panels on. Not that that'll work for half of the lunar day. We need more reactors. We need more nuclear reactors. Okay, I think that covers all of the local modules here. So, net increase of one module in this base area. Uh, it's not great the way we did it, and we've lost some Kerbals in the process, but... Alright, let's get the UI off, and that is the situation. So anyway, at least our rover sort of works. So that's a plus. And we will take it from there in the next video. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.